That being said, everybody, again, want to welcome you. This is Tom Randall. I'm the National Marketing Director from Golden Care. And I'm joined with my good friend and, and colleague, Janice Schreiner. And we go back and forth and help uh, share these webinars. So we've had a good time with them. We just got over doing, I forget the numbers now, so I'm probably making them up. But I think it was like 38 webinars the last go around. And now we have, uh, I think we have 48 webinars in 35 days now or something like that, or 30 webinars the first time. But regardless, a lot of webinars. And, and this is a fun one today because we do a lot of product training. And we do a lot of kind of method or madness on putting together products and showing which products will work for different people, et cetera. But what we really enjoy is kind of going out and showing you how to simplify the process and how important it is to go out and help folks with short-term care or the extended care experience. And, and this is kind of one of those. It's short-term care 101 because we know a lot of you folks who are on this call may not be in this wheelhouse. You know what? You're out selling Medicare. You're out selling life products, et cetera. So that being said, that's one of the reasons that uh, we're excited to get in and, and dive in with you today and, and share some of our background and experience. We've both been doing this for a tremendously long time, almost too long. We're aging ourselves here, but Dennis and I worked side by side for 25 plus years in this industry, and we've had a lot of fun over the years too. So Dennis, go ahead. I'll let you jump in and say hi to everybody. And Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um we know how busy everyone is, so thanks for taking time out of your schedule to uh, to attend the webinar. You bet. You bet. And you know what? I always start out a lot of these webinars. If some of you have been on there, it's redundant. But I think it's important just to show we're coming into November now, which is uh, LTC Awareness Month. And uh, we've been doing this so long, we always look and say, you know, 25 years ago, everybody said this industry is really going to be in trouble. There's so much gray hair in America. There's more seniors in America than there are people in Canada. And we just don't have the funding to be able to go out and have everybody get paid for by the government, no matter what you do, whether you're Democrat, Republican, or anywhere in between. So at the end of the day, it's kind of good timing that we're talking about this because we're kind of coming up to what we call a perfect storm in this industry. And we've had a few of these over the years. And right now, you know, when Dennis and I started training this, you know, 25 years ago, we were out telling people on consumer seminars and agents saying, you know, in 2030, when all these baby boomers turn age 65 plus and they're going to hit the age where they're going to start going on claim, uh, it's going to be a major shift in this market. And we're going to have a lot of problems because we, we're going to have so much gray hair in America and people are really are going to be starving for help. So it's our job as agents to help them. And at the end of the day, it's kind of funny and it's kind of scary because of the fact that the stats that we used back then aren't that much different than they are now, right? We know the population changes, but they were kind of expected. And we're seeing that people just aren't planning ahead. Politicians are trying to get reelected, so they're not changing laws, forcing people to say you better plan for yourself. So what we're seeing out there is there's still a huge majority of people are going to need some type of care. Once they turn 65, 70% of the folks out there are going to require some type of care. And especially with short-term care, when we talk about LTC Awareness Month, that means kind of nowadays you have to expand that to everything to do with long-term care or short-term care or home health care only plans like we're talking about in this in this initiative. So 70% of the folks out there will require some type of care, and especially with short-term care because they can have surgeries and, and fractures and things that long-term care would have covered. They're going to get used a lot more often than people think. And the scary things are, and I don't mean to hit you with so many stats to start out with, but Three out of every five personal bankruptcies in this country are caused by medical expenses, and most of those people had medical insurance. So we need to do our job as agents, go out there, do what you do every day, selling Medicare or life or whatever you're doing. You don't have to take your eye off that ball, but we do need to finish it with one little question. And Dennis and I will talk about that today and in our other webinars, how easy it is to just start the conversation and say, hopefully by now you know most people are going to need some type of care as they get older. Hopefully you have that taken care of, your extended care needs taken care of. And we can talk about how easy it is to start the conversation because sadly, 90% of adults have never had a real conversation about how to protect themselves and their families. A lot of people still think it's all covered and everything's taken care of, but there are a lot of expenses people aren't aware of. So uh, I'll get off that soapbox and, and kind of let Dennis maybe take over talking a little bit about the shifting market that I alluded to, and and we can go on from there, Dennis, if that's okay. Yeah, you bet, Tom. Uh, you know, that kind of dates us a little bit when Tom talks about the early years, because 
there has been a shifting in recent years of the marketplace. In the early days, a long-term care in particular was what we'd call a push sale. You'd have to push it onto people. Um, and I remember those early years of doing seminars, uh, uh, both agent and consumer seminars, and no one would raise their hand if you ever asked them if they've looked into long-term care before. And now in recent years, of course, when we've had that opportunity, both Tom and I, to, to do that, those same uh, consumer-based uh, seminars, it's amazing how many hands have gone up. But, you know, what's happened in terms of in the marketplace is those early years were great because we were placing about 90% of the business uh, back then. Carriers had not figured out really what type of liability they really had as, as it related to the risk. And, and of course, you know, we were selling unlimited plans. We were selling 5% compound inflation. And, and now you fast forward and, and the traditional marketplace has has changed. The, the numbers have definitely gone down. But what's emerging is this growth of the uh, what we call short-term care or extended uh, care marketplace. And that's because consumers and agents have really gotten aligned with, with really the same objectives. You know, one, they realize that you know, no matter what age they are, they want peace of mind. They want to know that they can put something in place. And the reality is with in the traditional marketplace today and some of the alternatives in the hybrid space, when you get above into that mid-60 age, now some of you on the call may be working with a lot of pre-retirees and maybe a lot of younger buyers. And so you don't face as much of a, of a concern um, with underwriting. But the reality is, uh, you know, the idea of what the consumers and agents are looking for is products today that have less underwriting, products today that have less uh, moving parts, and uh, products today that are actually more affordable. Because that 80% number that Tom just shared with us here on the screen uh, have at least one chronic condition. So they may not be able to get those traditional solutions or even the hybrid solutions. And you know, it's not just people 65 and above. There's people who've got chronic conditions at all ages. In fact, a number that Tom, uh, that we didn't put up on the screen, but I'll just share with you, 40% of, of individuals 18 to 64 are the ones who are actually uh, receiving some form of care. Think about that, 40% ages 18 to 64. So this is certainly a product that can appeal to the senior market, but it's also a product that can actually go to those younger buyers as well. And Tom's going to share with us maybe a little bit of the background just so that you have a foundation if you haven't done a lot of long-term care. Uh, the differences between what we think of as today uh, long-term care versus the new terminology that we're giving today, which is the short-term care or the extended care. And so Tom's going to walk us through a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison here, and then we'll continue down that road um, and educating you a little bit more about how dynamic this marketplace really is. You bet. Thanks, Dan. And that's one of the things we, if you look at our attendee list here today, we got a pretty good numbers and we got a lot of new, new faces on here, which is great. So some of you might, this might be a review and you've already seen this in one of the earlier webinars or you're well aware of the differences, but for some of you, it might be brand new. And when, since this is called Short-Term Care 101, we just want to spend a second to make sure you got your means about you because there's a couple really strong things that we want to hit on this next slide. And the first is the differences between long-term care, traditional that we talk about, and those are those plans that are minimum of two years and these are defined, that term long-term care is defined by the government, right? Because there's tax advantages and all these different things that come into play and different certifications, et cetera, to sell long-term care plans. So when we talk about long-term care, that's a minimum of two years for these plans. And in their most of the ones we sell are three or four years plans, but there used to be unlimited plans out there and 5% compound for unlimited amounts of times. And now there's still a couple unlimited plans, but they're really rare because of the fact that the industry got troubled from having those super long plans. And that's a whole different story that we won't beat up too much on this on this slide, but we'll talk about it. Short-term care plans now aren't defined by the government as much as they're just kind of like, they're not long-term care. They do kind of a lot of the same things, but they're not considered long-term care by the definition at the federal government level. So we call them in the industry short-term care plans, and you'll hear that a lot. And that's why Dennis and I will talk about when you're out talking to your consumers and your friends, we're going to use different terminology, and we're going to make sure we talk about things like extended care or your longevity planning or whatever it might be, 
because people in their head get the short-term care ID and they think that, okay, these plans probably pay for 30 days or 60 days when you get out of a hospital or something. They're just really short-term care. So one of the things we teach you as agents to educate your clients, make sure they realize we can build super robust plans. And I think I show you in this example, in this presentation today, I think I go through and show you just how robust these plans can be because you can sell super big, powerful plans. But on the same token, you can have these plans lower down and be very, very, very affordable for smaller plans as well. So it's a maximum of two years for, for a claim or for the policy. And then they have restoration, which can expand it beyond that. But basically in a nutshell, two years plus is long-term care, two years and below is short-term care per claim. Okay. And so the good news is we can build robust plans, but it does cap the individual risk for the carriers. And what it does is when we have inflation on some of these plans, you don't have that runaway inflation either because of the fact that with long-term care, that's what got them in trouble. We'd sell it to a, a 40-year-old like Dennis mentioned or 45, 50-year-old, and we'd have 5% compounding inflation. And then that person would go on claim with an unlimited plan for a huge amount of time. So those catastrophic claims were what beat up the long-term care. Maybe their best quality turned out to be their worst quality because they were great for the individual to save them from, we have claims that are over a million dollar claims, big time, uh, $2 million, I think is a record. Dennis might know them better than I do, but over $2 million that one of the carriers paid out for one individual for these policies. So they're, they're you know, couple catastrophic claims can affect an entire block of business, right? And that's what happened with long-term care, where with short-term care, you can still build robust policies, but because they're a limited benefit design and they know exactly how much their total risk is, it's much less risk for the carrier and it can be a win-win for the consumer and the carrier, okay? So because this uh, long-term care, they had very major stringent underwriting, like Dennis mentioned, so we can't get some of the older folks approved. And we have those big 20, 30 page apps sometimes that people love to have to work with. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and unlike that with the short-term care, you can have very flexible and affordable plan designs and you don't have to have that additional pre premium to cover the whole block in the long-term care industry. So I got a little bit deeper in there than I probably should have or wanted to, but I wanted to make sure you guys as agents know a couple things out of this. First of all, long-term care is great. We helped design the Mutual of Omaha plan here at Golden Care. We're very proud of it. It's the number one plan in the industry. And we've sold tons and tons, probably a billion dollars worth of business uh, over the years uh, with long-term care in general. Excuse me. So we're big believers in long-term care. But because of the way this industry has shift, shifted and because those plans became so complex, we realized that you have to go out and have other arrows in your quiver and short-term care plans are the perfect fit for our integrity family because some of you might delve into the waters of long-term care, but most of you are going to be able to say, I have a real nice, simple solution for you that's going to be very affordable and it's going to be something that's really easy to explain and it's really easy to put into place. So hopefully you're going to find that as we get in deeper into the product side itself. So Dennis always uses a great little tagline saying, with short-term care now rising at the top and these new policies, the, the ones we have in our portfolio, by the way, for you folks, with these new policies that are so flexible and strong, it kind of allows us to go back to the future again and, and really protect some of those older prospects that we used to be able to protect in the early days of long-term care. But now the, the industry shied away from them. Short-term care now can fill that gap, and it's a huge necessity, and it's a huge plus for you as agents. So, Dennis, I don't know if you want to go in and talk a little yeah, bit sure. about cost of care, and I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, I'll jump in on that, Tom. And one last point on the on the previous visual that Tom shared is keep in mind that, you know, there isn't a same LTC certification. So for those of you that are just life and health licensed, you don't have to have a special uh, LTC CE to be able to sell the, the extended care, short-term care um, uh, products. So that's something that's really important. And, you know, um, back to the cost of care, when Tom and I were doing these way back in the day, of course, I, I remember thinking, gosh, you know, 36000 a year, that was the average cost of a nursing home way back when we were starting. And of course, you know, we can see here today with the cost of care for a semi-private room, a private room. Uh, and when Tom is hitting that magic number of 2030, look where it's going to be when that perfect storm does hit. You know, it's that senior tsunami that's 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 going to wipe out a lot of states if they. And that's why so many of the states today are even preparing ahead by uh, 
considering ways by which they can, uh, like Washington did, uh, pass the CARES Act to to force people to buy long term care coverage because you know uh, Medicaid spending, and we could get on a whole soapbox, as Tom said, about going and talking about this unfunded liability, which is tremendous. But if you look at the rising cost of of, of home health care and uh, in nursing home care and assisted uh, living care. Um, most of that is not brick and mortar cost, and it's actually more of um, uh, the labor cost. And in some of these plans today, you can see again, and, and we'll speak to this a little bit later about the the, uh, the, the one of the big differences. Um, you know, Tom shared kind of the comparison of the LTC and the in the short term care, and the short term care plans are all uh, full indemnity uh, plans. They're not reimbursement. And that makes a big difference. Uh, Tom, you may want to speak to that, just using the example here at the bottom on on the difference when when uh, people get services. You bet. That's one of the things that really makes short-term care, besides having easier to go on claims, where long-term care, remember, says, if you want to have a long-term care claim, by definition, you have to have two of six ADLs, which means bathing, dressing, et cetera, transferring, continence, all those things. So you need to have help with two of six of those or a cognitive impairment, but you need to have a doctor certify you need it for at least 90 days. So that's one of the big differences. And then most long-term care plans are reimbursement type policies that say whatever your actual costs are, that's what the policy pays out. Short-term care by and large is, is an indemnity type policy that says, Here's your claim triggers. You need help with two of six or have a cognitive impairment, but we don't require the 90 days. So that's what I talked about earlier. You can go on claim easier with a short-term care plan because you might be just recovering from a surgery, have a knee replacement that you're just going to need a month or so of help, those type of things. You can jump in and use your short-term care plan. And the nice part about an indemnity benefit is I might sell you a $300 a day home care plan that is gonna pay up to $300 per day for any type of care you might need at home, physical therapy, speech, or whatever. But even if you have a home health aide come in for maybe two hours for a hundred bucks, I think the 169 is probably three hours of care for home health aid. And if you had that person come in, <laughs> excuse my cough again, if you had that person come in and only have a hundred dollars of actual charges in a given day, these indemnity policies say, we'll pay you the full daily benefit that you work to, whatever it might be in that policy. So you'll get paid in this example, $300 per day. So you'd have some money to put in the bank and save for a rainy day. So really nice there that it's simple. It's not something you have to have receipts and start filing and sending in all the receipts for everything. It's a much simpler process and it can really pay off as far as having a pretty robust plan that's going to pay you over and above what your actual cost might be. So unless Dennis has anything else to add there, I mean, when you look at overall services here, these plans are comprehensive at the home level for sure, right? All the different things you need for help with at home. And then if you have a comprehensive short-term care plan, we have the assisted living and the skilled nursing plans covered as well. Some of them also have adult daycare that we have in our portfolio and some plans out there that we have that are super easy underwriting that we'll talk about they won't pay for the facility side. They'll just pay for the home care. So we have a lot of different plans that we can help you out with. And we have a lot of things to help out your clients, wherever they may be. And again, sorry about this coffee, guys. I try hard to fight it back and not cough in your ear. I apologize about that. So Dennis, I'm going to go through this one really quick. And again, it's going to be a little bit drinking out of a fire hose for some of you who are brand new. And this isn't just to show the power of Omniflex only. It happens to be from our Omniflex presentation. But it was just a really nice, easy example to show you just how powerful these plans can be in a short-term care. Because that's one of the biggest things I promise you your clients are going to have to get over is they're going to hear short-term care and they're going to think that it probably doesn't pay that much. So why am I worried about it? I've heard of long-term care and I know those can be huge claims. Those you get a bang for your buck. So what I wanted to show you here is that these short-term care plans, whether it's Omniflex or Wellaby or the GTL plan in our portfolio, they're all super strong plans if you decide to design them on the more robust side, okay? So in this example, all I'm showing you is if I sold you a facility-based plan for Omniflex at $400 per day, that's what I can sell people with our full-blown plan. $400 per day on an indemnity basis means what? 
$12,000 a month, right? $400 times 30 is 12 grand. That's a huge benefit. Even at today's costs of uh, nursing homes, et cetera, that's going to pay a big chunk of that bill, if not every bit of it. Okay. If I sold them a 360 day plan and I can sell smaller plans, we're going to hit that really hard to remind you, you don't have to go out and sell Cadillacs to everybody. You can sell plans that are super, super, super affordable and still do some great things for your clients. But if you wanted to sell it at its top, you could sell $144,000 for a single claim on the facility. And then with restoration, which means you use the claim for a while, 30 days as you recover in the facility from a hip replacement or something. Then after you're healthy for half a year, it'll pump back those days back into your plan. So it'll actually could pay double that amount for the full life of the policy. So $288,000. do not worry too much if you don't understand all that right now. When you get into product training, that'll all make more sense. Okay. That's just the base part of the plan, you guys. You know what? We have a home health care rider on this plan, and all the policies that we talk about in our short-term care have either a facility with a home health care rider or a home health care base with a facility rider. So you get double bang for your buck with these plans. And on the home care side for Omniflex, for this example, you could sell $300 per day as a maximum daily benefit. That's $9,000 a month if you needed care every single day. That's huge. If you didn't need care every day, guess what? That 360-day plan you see there that pays out $108,000 because 360 times 300 is 108,000. You could stretch this plan out and say, I only get care three days a week or two days a week. Then that plan would stretch on and, and pay for those full 360 days if you were on claim for that period. Okay, So the 108,000 is a real number that's very attainable. Then when you throw restoration, it doubles again, 216000 So if you put it together, look at that down at the bottom, $252,000 potentially for one claim. And you know what? That restores to $504,000 potentially, half a million dollars with that plan. But remember, I talked about a million dollar plan. We have inflation available on this plan, you guys. So if I did those same math that I just showed you, and I put inflation on there, it would go up to doubling that over time. So now you're looking at 800 bucks per day or 24 grand a month in the facility, $18,000 a month at home. So you're looking at literally a 504,000 per one claim in the bottom right there, $504,000 for one claim potentially, or with restoration, you could have over a million dollar policy. So when you get to that point, those are the very robust parts of these plans. Not unbelievably expensive, right? If I sold a non-inflation plan there with 252000 and 504000 total potential, that's only 100 bucks a month for a 55-year-old. 65-year-old, I think it jumps up to about 140 bucks a month or so. And if I sold the inflation for a 55-year-old, it's $163 a month. So again, is it free? No. But look at that, a million dollar policy for 163,000 for a 55 year old, probably about 202 two bucks, I think a month, if I remember right, for a 65 year old. You can see there that these plans are affordable if you sell the major, major robust plan, but just as important and maybe more important for you guys on the phone is that you don't have to sell the most robust plan. You can go out there, that's a huge Cadillac plan I just showed you. You can go out and sell somebody a plan for $50 a month that you will be surprised at how powerful that plan will be for a 65-year-old at $50 or $100 a month. And it's very affordable, and it can do some great things for them at claim time. So, Dennis, I'll let you jump back in and and, and smooth out the edges of that if you'd like. Yeah, no, thanks, Tom. And, and you know, when Tom's talking about that, there's a couple of different strategies. Um, the great thing about these short-term care products is that you can give people their inflation benefit really up front with, as he said, selling that $400 a day. But there's another strategy that you can lessen that benefit and add inflation or even add inflation on top of the 400. It all depends on, on the affordability. But um, you know, to Tom's point, a lot of people just don't think you can design plans that are that are comprehensive and they really, these, these uh, plans really can be. And so here's the lineup um, with the integrity sponsored uh, uh, products. Uh, the GTL Recover Cash has been around of the three, the longest, and it's in 37 states. There was a kind of question that came up in the chat about California. Uh, none of these products are approved in California. We will talk about a product that is approved in California, and there may be something else that could be available. Uh, uh, we'd have to know who your marketer is and uh, 
uh, a couple of people that asked that question. Another question came up just as a, a, a manner of housekeeping is, yes, this is recorded. And what happens is at the end of the uh, session, uh, our IT people will uh, take this recording. They will send the recorded webinar to the marketer that invited you to come onto this call. And that marketer then will distribute the recording to you. So that was another question. Um, so back to the to the map, the Omniflex, uh, we just got Indiana approved. It's now in 32 states. We're working on a number of other states. Uh, Tom's working vigorously with the team at Manhattan to, to try to get states that have been problematic in the past, like Pennsylvania and, uh, and Virginia, as an example. Uh, and, and so we know that uh, GTL has Virginia approved, and we're looking to, to mirror that here with the Omniflex. Well, be just... Um, uh, launched in August of 19th. And so they launched with 10 states and they do things in five state increments. And coming in 2024, you'll you'll begin to see additional states. And probably when it's all said and done, uh, they might be in the same range of the 30-ish range as it relates to the number of states. But the gray area represents a, a product that we have that's a, a non-insurance home care product. It's actually membership hours. Like think of it like AAA uh, that people join as a member. And that's approved in all 50 states. And then in addition, there may be other, uh, as I said, um, a couple of you reached out and asked questions about California. And so I'd say reach back out to us and let us know who your marketer is and we might be able to, to help out. We really believe in being in the problem solving business and having solutions for all 50 states. And so on the home healthcare side, uh, again, a similar lineup. And, and that's where I'm sorry, I got a little ahead of myself on talking about that home care product, but um, uh, so you can see that the GTL, um, you know, mid thirties, as far as uh, where that product that that we had some, um, uh, you know, has just been uh, uh, updated with some uh, some great new little enhancements. So we'll be doing we'll be doing a standalone webinar just on the home healthcare products uh, themselves. Uh, the Manhattan, they've come out with a new product called Home Healthcare Select um, that has a legacy version of that product that's still in Colorado. Hawaii, Kansas, Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, Maryland, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. And that will eventually be uh, uh, replaced with the new home health care select. And then I mentioned to you about that true freedom plan, the all 50 states. So, you know, um, the, in, in Wellaby as well, as far as the 10 states that, and, you know, all of the products have a place and all the products have uh, their sweet spots. It's uh, it's important that you, that your clients have options and, you uh, and again, we want to make sure that we uh, help you to help your clients because the last thing you want is a client comes to you and they're looking for assistance and you say, well, I don't know if I have anything for you. So we want to make sure that, you know, there is solutions in all 50 states and, and we call it our perfect portfolio to make sure of that. So jumping ahead, Tom, I'll maybe just continue on here. Um, yeah. the, the important thing is, you know, is helping your clients to plan ahead, to be prepared, realizing that you know, that really there's only three ways and, and we're not getting into a, a, a consumer presentation here, but you think about this from the standpoint of how do people pay for care? They either, you know, pay for care with their income, they pay for care by converting assets to income, or they they basically are, uh, have some form of, a, of an insurance-based solution like the extended care plans or traditional long-term care or, or hybrids, or basically, they spend down and, and end up on government assistance. In California, we call it Medi-Cal. In other states, we call it Medicaid. So the important thing is that when you're starting the conversation is that you want to make sure that you're, you're knowing you know, who you're targeting as far as segmenting your market. These products, the great thing about them is in most cases, they're either at age 40 or 45 all the way up to age 85 or 89. And so you have a, a very uh, good size uh, age range. Um, and again, uh, younger younger buyers, you might think, might be only a candidate for a hybrid or a traditional long-term care. But again, everything starts and stops, and you'll hear this phrase a lot uh, as it relates to making sure that, that people can qualify for these plans. And so who to have the conversation with? I think every single client that you that you have that you're also servicing in the area of annuities or life or Medicare uh, or final expense, they're all going to be candidates to some degree. And whether they are candidates that buy the most robust plan or candidates that are looking for some form of a foundation or starter plan, 
the idea is that you can help um, everyone who should be thinking ahead, uh, just based on those statistics that we said, again, 40% of people receiving services today are 18 to 64. Think about that. So it's not just the fact that they get to age 79 and go on claim. Um, why do you need to have the conversation? Well, I'm a certified financial planner by, planner by training. I could talk to you about fiduciary responsibility, but more importantly, I think it's the fact that if you don't have that conversation, uh, your client's going to be having that conversation with someone else. And it may jeopardize some of the other business that you have with that client because that client doesn't perceive you as a resource in those other areas. And again, when to have the conversation? Well, you could have it at the end of a review. You could have it um, um, at the end of a enrollment of another product that you're working with and where you could maybe if someone just purchased an annuity from you uh, and you want to talk about the importance of asset protection so that they wouldn't have to spend any of those dollars from the annuity on, on their care. If they had just purchased a life policy from you uh, and you know what the probability is of them dying as to why they were motivated to buy the life insurance, uh, you can talk about the probability of them living, living and needing care. And how do you start it? It's very easy. We're going to have separate webinars on really going through um, a five-step selling process and actually how to have that conversation. Um, and the, the last thing we'll share, Tom, if you want me to keep on going and feel free to jump sure. back in after you've taken a couple of drinks of water there. Um, it is, you know, it, it's kind of four reminders here. And again, that's why we put that pyramid, whether it's LTC, life, annuity, Medicare, you might be serving all these uh, particular masters. Or then again, you might say, hey, I'm just an annuity specialist. I'm on this call and I really sell annuities. I'm not really big on underwriting. And again, I don't want anyone who's on this call to feel, especially with how simple these products are, how simple they are for you to learn, how easy they are for you to navigate a, just a several page application. It's not that 30, 40, 50 page application of long-term care or, or even life insurance in some cases. Um, these products are, are very easy. And if you, if you, if you feel like, Hey, I, I just haven't done a lot uh, in understanding these moving parts with underwriting, this is so streamlined. It's very easy. Don't let that be a roadblock to you getting ahead. But the most important thing is that so many agents that, and Tom could relate to this. I know uh, because we both have had similar experiences of training you know, literally tens of thousands of agents over, over the over the many years that we've been doing this. And I know agents, and uh, it, it's easy for me to say because we're, we're, we're kind of talking into a vacuum here where you're not actually participating, but uh, much the same way, uh, oftentimes when agents give their own delivery of a presentation, they're great at talking, but they're not really good listeners. And I always have a ratio that I think that you have to have, which is uh, how you have to spend really 70% uh, of your time listening and 30% of your time becoming what I call a good framer. A framer is someone who frames the question in such a way that it pulls people in so that you can go deeper with a follow-up question. And as you listen, you collect this information uh, of the things that they're saying and you're beginning to put it into your own process about where to navigate next, how, where, where to take that interview, if you will, because that's what you're really doing is you're conducting an interview with the with the client and it's always a balance between making sure you're not too heavily uh playing into the emotion card i remember early on as tom was talking about some of that memory lane aspects we were probably about 90 percent emotion and about 10 percent logic back in the day you would try to get people you know concerned about being a burden to their family and uh having someone that was going to change their diapers and you would come up with all kinds of crazy things that would play into the emotion and today, it's really a balance because what, what's happened is most people today, they look at things from a logical standpoint. Hey, will this fit into my budget? Does it really make sense? What type of plan do I really need? And so you can blend in logic and emotion. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't tell a story about someone that has gone through an experience or someone that that client that you're talking to has had an experience with. All those things are important, but don't let one side dominate the interview. Make sure you're maintaining that balance. And finally, with the point four is uh, leading. You know, we never, especially, it doesn't matter the age of it, whether the person's 40 or 82, uh, we never want to force, you know, uh, people. 
you know, the there's an old adage that says the person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. Trying to convince people to do something, <clears throat> especially when they're asking, you're asking them to make a continuous commitment to pay pay for something on an ongoing basis. You know, uh, people will never do that uh, against their will, and we should only basically uh, inform and educate and then lead them to that conclusion where they make that decision on their own, that that's something that they want to have, something that they can set aside the dollar amount that you have uh, worked out as Tom went through that plan design, how you can make it as robust or as trimmed down, but make sure that it's sustainable, whatever it is, because the last thing you want to do is overreach and give someone a Cadillac plan and they've got a, uh, you know, uh, a, a, Chevette uh, type of budget and uh, you know, they can't, it's not sustainable. Uh, you want to make sure it's something that will be the right solution. And again, it's not a one size fits all. You've got a lot of the template of the plan design is very similar, but you should make sure that you're adhering to what it is that are the pain points that that client is feeling so that you know where to go to, to solve this problem. Um, I call it peeling back the onion, onion, taking people to the valley of their pain. And when you take them to the valley of their of their pain, the, uh, and they begin to see how you can expose those pain points, um, you know they're gonna they're going to want what it is that you have to have uh, uh, that you're going to recommend for them. And so these reminders, Tom, are just good good things. And I know that you probably wanted to jump in and and oh. say a few more things, but I wanted to make sure that we at least uh, covered that and made sure everyone. Uh, in this ST101, know that we've got a bunch of other webinars and hope that they'll uh, tune in for the for the rest of the series. Absolutely. Thanks, Dan. And I, I can't stress enough just how important that is. And the one thing I always try to reel us back in is to remember that this advice Dennis is giving you is just good, sound, solid advice across the board. And and we have a lot of fun with these webinars and I'm looking forward to having you. I like the fact we're seeing some good numbers on this call and and when you come into our other webinars, like uh, uh, overcoming objections and how to design a plan and how to how to start the conversation, you know, that's when we really dive in. And what I want to make sure you know is it isn't hard. That's the biggest thing I try to remind people is, you know, if I want to have you be a long term care specialist and commit your life to it, I can have you roll up the sleeves and I'll bore you to tears and teach you everything you ever needed to know about long term care and all the intricacies of it. But at the end of the day, I always try to remind agents, and Dennis and I always try to stress that, remember, this isn't rocket science. This isn't something you have to go to med school to understand the underwriting. We don't toss you out of the plane without a parachute. We have all the tools, and I'm going to show you in a second on our website, all the tools we have to help you in the background to be able to go out and be successful. And the biggest thing to remember is, as long as your heart's in the right place, Logic rules the day and you can go out and do this so simply with your clients and, and help them out just by saying, you know, I really value our, our friendship and our business association here, Jen, Jenny and Jim. And I love the fact that we got your Medicare, or your life product or your annuity or whatever it might be in place. And, you know, one of the things I always tell my clients is it's really important that we take care of your extended care situation. So do you have something in place now? I mean, literally, that's how easy it is to start a conversation. And we tell stories and you'll hear us talk about how Dennis had somebody at breakfast at a convention and basically almost sold him a policy in 15 minutes. I mean, it's it's that easy to turn heads and get them leaning in. Once you just say a couple things and it's not scare tactics, like Dennis said, it's it's nowadays very logical to say, you know, right now in America, we have so much gray hair, you know, more seniors in America than there are people in Canada. And what's happening is as all these people are needing care, there's a lot of implications that it might mean for you and your family. And a lot of people think, well, I can maybe self-insure, but I'm going to show you that we can buy a policy for you and get you some protection in place. That's going to really do wonders for you leveraging those dollars. And it's going to be a smart business decision for you. And more importantly, if you have private insurance, I can talk about some of the things that you know, you're not going to get booted out of a Medicare or Medicaid hospital or nursing home because they needed the bed. If you have private insurance, it gives you a lot of pluses, care coordination. So somebody's going to help you make decisions for your family and help you make the most of your policy. So there's a lot of things that this thing can do. And the one thing I want everybody on this call to remember and your clients to remember is that whether you have a $5 million nest egg or a $500,000 or a $50,000 nest egg, 
or $25,000 nest egg, it's still your client's nest egg. So whatever people you're working with, you know, we've done studies and we talk about, you know, the Rothschild Institute and Notre Dame University did a study saying, if you have literally two days of home health care in your house for two hours a day, you can keep people sometimes out of a nursing home for an extra year. I think how important that would be for somebody who's saying, I'm definitely afraid. I've heard this COVID stories and I don't have a lot of money and I don't have a lot of means, but I do have enough where I would love to have some extra protection and try to keep me at home for a little bit longer if I ever needed it. So there's the need for this, whether it's those robust plans that cover the Cadillac side of it, or if you say, you know what, let's de design a super affordable plan and get you started. And this is one of the nice things with these policies. We can design a plan to be as affordable as you need it to be for any client. And they're going to feel really good about the fact that you offered them that plan. So uh, again, it's a little bit soapboxy, but I want you to know, remember that it's simple and remember that don't get scared of something new because the end of the day is we need to be able to have folks like you step out of your comfort zone a little bit and be able to go out and help these folks because number one, they need it. Number two, you're going to keep your persistency up. You're going to end up having a more of a trusted advocate for other types of insurance lines. And you're going to make a tremendous amount of extra income as an agent because we know this isn't a hobby and these policies pay very well those first year end renewals. So you're going to have some really good pluses for you and your client if you take the time just to use our tools and to, and to listen to what we're saying and try to take our advice and go out and help more people with these plans. So that being said, Dennis, I don't know, should we go into the sales and marketing side? Yeah, first I think or? we have a couple, I think we have a couple minutes left, Tom. And, and what Tom is is showing is our integrity stc.com. Um, we've designed this for our, our partners and for our partners' agents, which are you folks who are on this uh call. And it's a place that you can go to get everything that you need in one spot. So no longer do you have to worry about hey, where was those PDFs on uh, Manhattan's Omniflex and GTL's Recover Cash or Wellaby? Uh, when Tom clicks Learn More, it, it has all the information. It has the heat map that shows you the state availability. It gives you, uh, of course, all the product information. Uh, there's uh, Everything is recorded. So even, even if you're joining these webinars from, um, uh, from the previous series that we did, those are all housed here as well um, for you to go in and, and to to uh to review at your leisure um and again on the home care side the same thing with the manhattan the gtl and the true freedom uh uh, uh product information we have a, pro a program called insta pivot which is uh tom actually uh, developed this originally when he was uh, you know studying what was on every application to get smarter in terms of our own development of products and as such it morphed into getting our IT people involved to become a living, breathing tool. And we'll have a separate webinar just on how to use InstaPivot. But it doesn't mean that you can't right now go and request and uh, and actually, uh, uh, you know, it's a special authorization to to actually, it, it, there's no cost, but but you do have to register to get access so that we know who's using the, the InstaPivot. But it, it's something we'll spend more time on in the future, talking about, again, how do you get smarter from an underwriting standpoint on various underwriting conditions and based on state availability and so on and so forth. And there's all kinds of other tools that we have that are available uh, uh, to you to help in this understanding the need. Uh, we wanted to make sure that as Integrity likes to do with, as you know, with Medicare Center and, and with the Lead Center, although you do pay on the Lead Center side, but, you know, Medicare uh, uh, Center is free. This this site and the services that are available on the site are all free. And here's again, uh, Tom showing some examples of some of the recorded training. Some of them are just the recorded webinars and some are actually shorter little uh, fireside chats or product specific uh, webinars that both Tom and I have done uh, to give you again, pour out whatever bit of knowledge that we have that, that's going to that's going to help you. Um, you know, probably the, one of the biggest satisfactions that we get in this business is being able to have people use any of the ideas or, or thoughts or phrases. Uh, if it helps you, that's what we're here to do because we're we're all in this together, trying to not only, as Tom said, you know, serve more individuals, but but to uh, to make sure that um, we can help individuals to plan ahead. So those personalized planning. Um, 
uh, you know, uh, there's others on there, Back to Basics, Seven Reasons Why People Don't Buy. I think you'll like that one. Um, I have a little fun with that one on that topic. And Tom's done some great ones on on helping on some of the product stuff as well to make sure that you have an understanding of some of the nuances of the product. And we got great consumer stuff that's here as well. So, Tom, a bunch of stuff that's here. And I know we're already a, a little over our time, but I wanted to make sure that at least we – we shared with the group where they can go um, and uh, again, reach back out to the marketer that invited you on this, uh, this particular call. They'll be getting this recording and they can get it to you. And Tom, I'll let you close it out. You bet. Thanks, Dennison. Thanks everybody for taking the time to let us uh, yap at you today. And, and again, this is just kind of the intro, the, the one-on-one session and jump on the other webinars, contact the marketer that you got you on this webinar Tell them, hey, we want to make sure I get appointed with these other carriers for the short-term care initiative and <clears throat> jump on these sales webinars or go jump on the recordings. And I, I just can't stress enough that we can really go out and make a dent and we can go out and help all of your clients out there. And it's so much easier than what you may think it'll be. And, and we have the backup and support again to make it very simple for you and very easy to go in and feel like you can make some good decisions along with your clients. And if you listen to what we're telling you to do, I promise you, you're going to have some good success with this. And it's something, again, that's so, so important for both you and your clients. So I, I sure hope you'll join us again. And again, this is Tom Randall from Golden Care, along with my friend, uh, Dennis Reiner. And we want to thank you very much for jumping on this call today and hope to see you on another webinar very soon. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate all you do. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. The next step is yours. Contact your marketer for more information and to start offering short-term care solutions to your clients. And be sure to sign up for our other short-term care hot topic webinars.